cool. Uh, hi, hi guys. Um, so my, I'm here to talk about sound. So my name is Kenny. Um, I was born one day and I wanted to hear music, right? But when you're home coding, you, your wife calls you to the kitchen and all, and you take it on and off. It's kind of irritating. <laughs> and so, so I say like, yeah, I want to make some something like a speaker system. But problem was that at that point, all I could do in terms of electronics was to make some lights blink on a LED like this. It's not very helpful. So I was like, well, what can I do, right? So treating it like a project game mentality, I say, let's start somewhere. So I uh, made a BraveBot M. I went Google and like, this is the most minimalist M you can build on a, on a BraveBot. It works, uh, doesn't sound very good with all the crackling, uh, you know, coming from it, but that is a start. So, okay, uh, let's look at the, how, how the whole system works. So I figure I need some, some place where I get music from. Uh, raspberry and you know one of those shields you buy with one of those uh, OS uh, that lets you stream music like Spotify was kind of a good start so that's all where I started and it was very easy and uh, fulfilling because it took me only like a couple of minutes so like great so now I have somewhere to take music from and I need a pair of speakers so I was wondering if there's some speakers where I could just do it in that amount of time there are so there's this thing called open baffle speakers that you don't even have a box around the drivers. You just basically buy the wood, you cut the hole, you put the driver, you screw them on. So this took only a screwdriver and a couple of minutes of my time. So I was like, yay! So keep coming. So we're on. I was like, okay, so what's the next thing I want to do next? I can add a buffer in between so I can tweak the volume control. So this helped me build a little bit more confidence in my soldering skill, which was quite horrible when I started. So on a, on, a, on a side note, when I started building all of this, I also found that there's this cool program called OpenSCAD where you build like 3D uh, stuff to print, but instead of a visual interface, you code it. So if you guys have not seen it before, go check it out. So at the point I had the source, I had the speakers, I have the buffer. I didn't have an amp, I didn't know how to build one, so I sort of bought one and screwed it on a wooden board as a temp for testing. So yay, go on reach. I have a working system in the workshop that made me happy. So then I decided to attempt like a big leap, right? Oh, I want to amplify it. I'm going to build one myself. So unfortunately, I almost killed myself, which you'll hear about later. <laughs> so this is a tube amp uh, that's naked. Uh, I bought the parts. I figured out the PCB. I got the tubes. And here's it sort of working on the table. 300 volts from that uh, amp meter. And then I found another side quest, which I want a nice case. So there's this program called LibraCat, which is also kind of nice. You can get readings from the internet and uh, build all this... Uh, cases for your amps. So in the end, I got this done, which was really cool. Uh, so yeah, then I realized that at that point, like, whoa, I created a whole audio chain from scratch. I have the source, I have the preamp, the amplifier, and the speakers. So make more speakers, right? Because my wife was like, what are you doing inside the workshop? Are you sure you're not wasting more money and stuff? So I went ahead and built another set of speakers for the living room so she can be happy too. So this one was a little bit more complicated. It was a uh, a boxed up one, you know, I have to figure out how to get the funny little wool to work. I use all the books I have to make the glue stick. <laughs> and there I have it as a finished product. So the key takeaways I learned from this funny adventure was that uh, digital sources are awesome. They, are, they will perfectly replicate stuff. Voltage meshing is important. MD FireTech is already very mature. There's no need to spend a lot of money on it. The most, uh, best thing you can spend money on are the speakers because they vary by quite a fair bit. Uh, what I learned is that uh, safety is important. So I think there was at one point I went and poked at the thing and it was still on. I got a big shock and then the circuit breaker tripped. So I'm, I'm still here. So what I really learned is that I don't like magic. I, I found that the most rewarding thing in this whole thing was that if you tear apart everything, you learn a lot. And uh, yeah, you should do the same too. The end. Okay. Okay, question. Yeah. I'm very nervous, so. Yes? Really cool, really cool. Um, you said that amplifier tech is really mature, but speaker tech is not. Yeah. Didn't they sort of originate at the same time? What's still evolving? Well, speak, from what I know, I'm not really like a real expert, but um, you know, basically for amplifiers, they, they transform uh, signals. So by now, the tech, the hardware for that is really mature. Um, in, there, there have been a lot of cases where they did blind testing and people couldn't hear the difference. Where speakers you have the mechanical moving parts, right? So it's it's there's still a fair bit of room to play around that. Uh, I think audio engineers from during this time where I learned they have ways to measure this kind of thing, uh, total harmonic distortion and all these funny terms where they can sketch out. And, and, and at this point, amplifier uh, 
distortion is at the point that you probably can't hear it unless you're like some supersonic mutant or something. But for speakers in blind tests, they, they actually can differentiate very clearly. Like, oh, after five, five, six, seven, eight times, they can still say this is speaker A and that's speaker B. So, mm. cool. Yeah. So the actual end result, I, I understand that it was mostly done so that you can say you, you've done it yourself, but does it actually sound good? <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, I had a couple of friends who were like your audio foulish types. They came, they, they, they were surprised, very surprised. Some of them I, I, uh, said that it sounded better than some other setup they heard that was expensive. I have no idea. They were the most expensive thing I ever built so, and listened to. They, they sound great to my ears, I guess. Mm. What's yeah. the cost? Yeah, what is the most expensive? The most expensive things would have been the speakers because some of, some of the stuff I, I didn't know where to get in Singapore. So I had them ship over uh, from online when I, when I talked to guys. So the shipping was always the killer. But still, uh, dollar for dollar is still cheaper than if you went to the high-end stores and bought something by like four or five times. So, yep. so you said with the LibreCAD, you could just send it for machining. Yeah. Is that in no, I, I got a friend in the US to do it for me. Yeah, so in, I, I'm, I'm sure there may be places here where they can do it. But in Singapore, I found that most of the guys who do this would be catered to like a mass volume thing. Yeah. Cool. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Mm. Like, have we only seen the, the happy path or really the first version of each one really work? Like, did, did, did you, for example, like the first one that you 3D printed, did that really fit over the... Yeah. The, 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 did the first machine version really fit over the... the yeah, uh, yeah. So, so uh, uh, the, the, this, this, this took me a while. Uh, all of it was first pass. Okay. So I was lucky that I fried nothing. Uh, so uh, a bit lucky in the aspect, yeah. Cool. Okay, thank you, guys.